This is what you look like. Does that bother you? I bet it does. I'm not just wearing your face, you know. It goes a lot deeper than that. There's a lot of you and me. All the best parts. At first, I was just an idea. But they kept telling all those stories about you. You already had that rep. And then you disappeared mysteriously. And then, the stories about bad, crazy Alan Wake came true. And here I am. That's the best part, isn't it? When that happens, you can always count on Cauldron Lake. I'm just as real as you are. And I'm the improved version. No fears, no doubt, no weaknesses, no self-deception here. I don't let anything drag me down. I know you like I know myself. I know it bothers you that I'm like this. That I use your name, crawl my way into your life. But I only do it because... I'm better at being you than you ever were! I know physicists who would give 15 years of their lives for a chance to experience something like this. I'd imagine that being stalked by horrible axe murderers would curb their enthusiasm a little. Clearly you've never met hardcore physicists. I'm glad you're in such good spirits, but... The signal! Yes, it's completed! Finally. If all goes well, this should be the last time we go through the loop. You know, I just realized that I don't have any memory of what happens after you leave. What does that mean? I don't think it means anything. 
If everything goes well, you just keep going. I don't show up here like this again. No more bad guys. Things go back to normal. Let's hope you're right. I'd love the opportunity to look into this in more detail. Looks like you've accepted the situation. I'm a pragmatist. If this is a delusion, at least my first psychotic episode is anything but boring. Really, Mr. Wake, at the end of the day, I'm a scientist. I love mysteries. I love not knowing. Whatever else this might be, it's absolutely fascinating. I wonder how far this reaches. Is everybody in the world experiencing this? Who knows? I think reality is probably pretty fragile right now. Doctor, I can see you're very enthusiastic about this. I'd appreciate a bit of discretion. Are you suggesting that we should suppress this? No. You can do what you like, but I want you to leave me out of it. But surely, with the things you know, the things you've experienced, you can replicate any of these results. We could... Let me be blunt. If you drag me into this, I'll deny everything. I'll lie like my life depended on it. And writers are damn good liars. Word of advice, this is things man was not meant to know territory. You get into this, chances are you'll open up a door into a world of hurt. Believe me, I know. I see. In a strange way, he feels at ease. He is armed with his own words. And when the time comes, they will be enough or they will not. For now, he's content to let the currents take him toward the final confrontation. Once more, we return to the drive-in. If he's aware of the absurdity of arming oneself with a few sentences and standing against a power that can pierce time itself, he doesn't show it. The man has his share of weaknesses, perhaps more, but cowardice is not among them.
never getting out of this wake, never! Don't worry, I'll take care of your wife and your life! and I'll send you right back to the beginning. getting out of this wake never don't worry i'll take care of your wife and your life getting out of this wake never don't worry i'll take care of your wife and your life
Never getting out of this way, never! Don't worry! You're doing, but I'll send you right back to the beginning. When the dark man's eyes suddenly locked into serenity, The man before Dr. Meadows was handsome and slick. I'd found her film from the pile of containers in the back. I'd threaded it into the projector. I swallowed hard, staring at the screen, hearing her voice. The sunrise I remembered so well only moments away. And then Mr. Sh was there, nailed by the projector's beam, caught in his own trap. He shouted at me, first in confusion, then rage. And then the sun came up and things started to burn. Whatever it is you're going to do is going to make a difference? This will end up just like before!
There's more to fighting the Taken than just burning away the darkness that protects them. When I'm fighting for my life, I find myself slipping into a state of intense concentration that makes the beam of my flashlight seem more powerful and focused. I used to think it was just my imagination, something brought on by the adrenaline and fear of death, but now I'm not so sure. I've been touched by powers that I can't begin to truly comprehend, and they've left a mark. I'm starting to think this might be a part of it. I've been around for a while now, you know? While you've been indisposed, stuck in the darkness. I've been busy. I operate in the shadows. Not always literally, you understand? I'm a little more resilient than those I've taken. But I do my best work in the dark. Uh, and there's so much darkness out there! It goes deep! And the things that live in it are fast, big bastards! They don't mind getting a little bit of elbow room. All that chaos and madness, it doesn't really do that much down there. It's like pouring a glass of water into the ocean, right? But up here, the film canister in my hands. I saw her name written across it in big letters followed by the title. It was a time capsule, moments snatched from times gone by, from a past that I hoped could also be our future. It was my salvation, our salvation, our chance to be together. A tin can with a bit of magic in it that she didn't even know about, something I could put to good use. There were only moments left before I had to face him. Clothes I wear now I shaved from dreams and memories. It's an old outfit, originally from the 90s. The last time I wore it was when I was still riding and Alice and I took a vacation in the desert before our troubles began. The night before, we'd been at a party, and I had dressed to the nines. 
On that lazy day, I put on these old clothes, worn and comfortable. Alice made a joke about grunge. I felt a little embarrassed, but I stuck with them. We were very happy. I'm sheathed in good memories to remind myself of what is at stake. to me again. It's like somebody vomited in my brain, like a sleazy movie that keeps looping in my head. I'll stop this, I swear. You know the part that's really screwed up? If you mess it up, it'll just keep happening forever, right? I don't think I can deal with that. Don't think about that. I don't think of anything but. Hey, afterwards, when all this is done, look me up. This thing, I can probably help you deal with it. I don't know. It's almost like I'm not even in the same world anymore. Everything's just weird now. Yeah, I know. A lot of that'll pass with time. But being touched by the darkness, it's rough on you. It's a lot to process. And I just don't want you to get completely screwed up by this. Might be a little late for that, to be honest. Yeah, well, there's degrees. At least you're not at a point where you go around picking fights with people over not changing their light bulbs often enough. What? Never mind. All I'm saying is, you're not alone with this. And anyway, you're friends with Alice, so, you know, any friend of hers. Thank you. Hello, folks, and welcome to the third part of our pre-recorded review with three of our the driver's first, Alice Wood. So, uh, tell me about the film. It's called Sunrise, and it really wasn't something I ever thought of as an actual film. It was just footage, things I saw and happened to shoot. It's not a medium I'm very much at home with. You shouldn't put yourself down. You've got a great eye. Maybe. But experience is another thing. Because you're primarily a still photographer. Yes, exactly. So I'm really used to thinking of the world in terms of snapshots. I frame something and try to pick the right moment, and then reveal that moment to people. Moving images are a different story. I'm still learning a lot about it, to be honest. So, this is a new thing for you? <laughs> or maybe I'm just a slow learner. But showing it like this is definitely a new step for me. It's a little weird taking something this intimate and showing it to everybody. Not that the material itself is somehow shocking. It's just that those are private moments. But that's why it works, because it feels genuine. It's not so much a story as it is a sort of an echo, showing us how you saw your husband at the time. It's not really about the sunrise itself or Alan watching it. It's about you two together, I suppose. It's funny looking at it now, especially now that it's been edited like that. It takes on a life of its own, almost. It's a kind of a fantasy. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. No, you're right. I'm glad you talked me into it.
again, the Champion of Light enters the final trap. The new reality is almost here. All he needs to do is change the details of the scene, push it past the breaking point, and the rest will snap into place. these actual events or merely a dream, a memory or a glimpse of what is to come. One thing is certain. This scene takes place in another time and another place far, far away from Night Spring.